I like to make slightly weird but still functional designs, so I 3D scan real world items and turn them into 3D printable products. For this project, I went on the hunt for the most soap dish like bunch of bananas that I could find. I actually managed to turn the winner into a usable product with nice features, but I also had to confront my multiple decades old banana eating issue. I'm a little scared, but let's start at the beginning. So this is pretty much the entire concept. I want to make a soap dish that looks like a bunch of bananas. The first thing to do is acquire bananas. So I went to several supermarkets to gather a few candidates. I just came back from the store, it was super weird. They asked me if that was like some sort of representative because I was just checking out the bananas for 15 minutes and I couldn't tell them like, no, I'm looking for a specific shape of bananas that I want to turn into a soap dish and I'm going to 3D scan and 3D print them. So I just, I just stumbled something. Okay, I was looking for a hand or a bunch of bananas, pretty much Three, I think is a good choice. I proceeded to refine my selection pretty much mostly based on the curviness and if I overall like the shape. After ending up with two finalists, my brain got stuck a little. Damn it. I don't know. <laughs> should I go for the more natural one or should I go for the more already soapy, dishy one? After about 30 minutes of making this crazy important decision, I don't know. I don't know. I decided to go with the more soapy, dishy one. Yeah, I think I think this is the one. I got my spinny thing set up. Um, I think this will be a pretty easy scan. The shape is super basic. Whee! Spinning bananas. After watching the banana spin for a while, the first impression of the results was not too promising. But I'm going to check it out on my computer, since I need a bigger screen. You start out with a point cloud that the scanner captured and the software will generate a mesh from it. Now we can see a clear picture of how the scan turned out. The bottom parts are missing, but we will have to edit those later anyway, so no big deal. Otherwise pretty solid, only the residue of the stickers is visible, but I can clean it up later. Now we use the awesome feature that is called fill holes, which does what it says on the tin. We select the maximum hole size and fill it in. Pretty cool and saves a ton of time. I think I can actually use the scan, but before I start with the editing, I need to tell you something. I actually made a bunch of banana designs already, like these cute little fridge magnets that you can like stack up, or my banana bowl, my banana lamp, and actually I can't handle bananas. Or I don't know if I can. I've eaten like maybe four or five in my entire life, because every time I did, I felt really sick afterwards. So I don't know if that's a pure coincidence, but I am going to try one and see how I feel afterwards. I've been wanting to try this for a while since it's just so weird to make this many banana designs without actually eating them. The last time I remember eating one was almost a decade ago, so it is time to give them another chance. Let's see if that's a good idea. I'm a little scared, but let's see. Slightly afraid, I can continue to bring the scan over into Blender and start the least fun part, scan fixing. First thing is to rotate the thing precisely so we can add a bottom cut later to get rid of the turntable. From there, I approximated the bottom parts and proceeded to fix the ridges between the bananas. I also got rid of the stickers on top and fixed some scan artifacts. With the basic cleanup done, I can proceed to get this volume 3D printable. To get that done, I am changing the steepness of the bottom in relation to the print surface. A quick test export in my slicer will show me exactly where the overhangs are too steep and the printer might run into problems. The blue spots need to get fixed. So pretty much the bottom part and some minor spots up top. After a bit of trial and error, I got it dialed in and we are ready for the first test print. So on the following day, I can already evaluate the print and see what has to be done next. The first prototype is looking good already. We still got some improvements to make at the bottom. The overhangs are already working pretty well, but there's still some cleanup to do. I love that I can print this in the exactly 100% size of the bananas. This is pretty awesome. The basic functionality is there, but that doesn't say a lot. You just need a flat surface to place the soap. So we got this one covered. So I think now it's time to move on to the next steps. So while this was printing, I already sketched up some detailed drawings in my 3D printed notebook. It works really great. You have a little pencil case in there. I even have a stencil and it's just overall the thing I use the most. I use it daily, definitely give this a try. Since we already have these ridges in between the bananas, I wanna use this as drainage. So I want the water to go through these two slits and drain into the bottom. I want to actually print this in yellow and brown later. So we got to split it up. The front parts will get removed and the little top part that connects the three bananas. 
It is actually day two of this little adventure. So here's a little update on my not so scientific study. I actually can handle one banana. Then my mic died and I don't remember exactly what I was saying. This is so weird. In my head, it felt like I was lying to my audience because why would I make all of these banana designs if I don't even eat them? I actually thought I would give it one more go, would feel bad and give them to a friend to avoid food waste. This actually kind of messes with my plot here and finishes the story arc. I don't know how this got stuck in my head. Maybe I just had one bad one as a child. I'm 30, so this info is kind of coming in late, but I guess it's never too late for some unlearning. So now what you see me doing here is eating two bananas to see if the doses changes anything, but that's just kind of bonus points already. One is enough. So let's dive back into Blender with my newly found wisdom. First, I did a little detailing on the bottom part and then proceeded to start the hollowing process. Unfortunately, Blender is really bad at offsetting surfaces, so I made up my own little workflow for these tasks. I export the STL into Mesh Mixer where I offset the body by all distances that I need according to my sketches and experience. I then re-import those into Blender and start to boolean them. After using two of the offsets to create the extrusion, I combine it with the bottom. Then I used the other two offsets to create the cutout for the top. The slits were definitely easier. I just extruded and rounded two rods to use as cuts, but I had to bend them slightly to fit. I remeshed them so I can then proceed to round off the edges of the cut. I will also provide multicolor printing files that are pretty much done at this point, but I know a lot of my members only own or prefer to print in single color to produce less waste. This means it's time to split the brown and yellow parts. I made up some cones with the 0.1mm offset to cut off the front pieces. They have a flat bottom, so we can later print them without support. After cutting off the top, I realized I need a flat surface for this part, since I don't want you to use supports. When I scanned it, it used to be flat, so I decided to cut it off and use this bottom surface. With all parts done, I'm ready to slice things up and print the next prototype. Now it is time to test the assembly. I'm using some super glue to connect the brown and yellow parts. All three of the front thingies have a different shape, so it was easy to identify which one was which, and I proceeded to glue them in. The last one was a little tough to get in, probably due to the long edge, so I might have to increase clearance here. I applied some glue to the spot where the top brown part is supposed to go and placed it. After holding it down for a little while, the thing was ready. I tried to put the top on the tray, but I noticed I put it in the wrong direction, so I had to turn it around. I might add a directional arrow to the two parts, but honestly that might be an overkill, since searching for the arrows on both parts might take longer than a 50% chance of getting it right, right away. I love how the slits turn out. They still leave a little piece at the end, so the thing is still robustly one piece, and they don't cut into the bottom ridges. Now it's time to test it out. I will make sure to wash my hands a lot over the weekend to give it a proper little testing cycle. Since two bananas did not change anything, I also appreciated my newly unlocked fruit. And since they were ripening really fast, I gave my best to eat as many as I could. After testing the design over the weekend, I only ended up changing two things. One is uh, the clearance of the little front part. So I changed it from 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters, which ended up improving the assembly a little. The second thing I changed is I used adaptive layer height for this part of the print um, to improve the surface quality. I printed all parts on my Centauri carbon from Elegu and the prints came out super nice. I really love how this turned out. I will use it daily from now on and I think it will bring me a little joy every day because it's so cute. And it also works really great. The drainage is awesome. So please let me know in the comments if you would like more fruity bathroom designs. And also since this is my first long form YouTube video, any feedback is appreciated. I put the link to print yours in the description.